Her name is Divya Nock. She comes to us by way of Stanford University, where, like most Stanford undergraduates, uh, she started companies that attracted hundreds of millions of dollars in funding, also started nonprofits, including uh, Stardex Med, which is also attracting hundreds of millions of dollars in funding. She's going to talk to us about that and her ideas for the broader health system. Ladies and gentlemen, Divya Nog. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here this morning to talk about an issue that I'm really fascinated by, America's drug problem. And no, I'm not talking about this drug problem. I'm actually talking about this drug problem. This map represents global access to medicine. The highlighted countries indicate ones with little to no ability to afford life-saving drugs. Again, it's not that the latest and greatest vaccines and beta blockers can't be shipped to these regions of the world. It's actually that populations in these countries are too poor to pay for them. It's absolutely tragic. I believe in a world of perfect meritocracy, one where individuals should be able to excel regardless of what conditions they were born into. This map is a horrible reminder of how far away we are from that vision. Without equal access to medicine, the race is over before it can even begin. My journey into medicine began through the promise of regenerative medicine. I became a lab rat, working 60 to 80 hours a week as a freshman at Stanford University at the Medical School's Institute for Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine. Two years and 17 publications later, I was convinced that the future of medicine would look something like this. Have too much to drink last night? It's not a problem. We'll grow you a new liver. Smoked too many Cuban cigars on vacation? It happens. Not a problem at all. We'll grow you a new set of lungs. Get dropped on your head as a baby? It's really not your fault. We have a solution for that, too. Can grow you a brain. Even your eyes, your kidney, and my personal favorite, the most fascinating organ, and the one with the most unprecedented potential, the human heart. To this day, heart disease is the number one cause of death for both men and women, cancer being a close second. It's a major problem. Every year, 700,000 Americans have a heart attack, and 600,000 people die from heart disease. And that's every single year. That's one out of four deaths. In 2010, Heart disease cost the U.S. an estimated $320 billion. It's shocking. The worst part of all of this is that heart disease is one of the few diseases that is completely controllable and preventable. But let's face it. At the end of the day, it's hard to keep people healthy. While we're starting to think about preventative medicine more and more, we're still 100% reliant on the creation of new drugs to help us fight off really scary diseases. However, the pharmaceutical industry and drug development process is extremely slow and extremely costly. It takes an average of 12 years from the time a promising discovery is made to commercial launch. To put that in some context, it took 17 years before penicillin, which is the first miracle drug, actually made it to help a single patient. Imagine the number of people we could have saved had we shaved 10 years off that process. Imagine the contribution that each one of those people that we had saved could have made to society. Maybe we could have discovered the internet earlier. Who knows? Not only does it take forever to get these drugs to real people, but it costs a lot of money. The average cost to bring a single successful pharmaceutical com compound to market is estimated to be $1.8 billion. Incorporated in that cost is the cost of the five to 10,000 compounds that failed, that the organization still had to pour their time and resources into. The industry average to bring a promising compound even to phase one clinical trial, and remember, there are two more clinical trials after the first one, alone is $800 million, at which point four of five compounds tried will fail. That's an 80% failure rate and a whole lot of money. With costs like $1.8 billion, to get a single drug to the market, it's no surprise that pharmaceutical companies have to charge an arm and a leg to patients to take that one successful drug. 
They have to cover all the costs of all the failures they sustained in order to get that one compound out to people. Because of this, 90% of the countries around the world cannot afford these life-saving drugs. Five years ago, a few scientists and I asked the question that you guys are all probably thinking right now, but why is it so expensive to make these? Why can't Moore's Law, which has revolutionized the way technology advancements are made in Silicon Valley, be applied to drug discovery and the drug development process as well? Well, the answer is this little guy. Okay, so not him specifically, but the primary reason for the inefficiencies that exist in drug development today is that there are, no, there are no current methods of which we can actually test potential drug candidates on human tissue prior to phase one clinical trials. Something that tests well in this little guy may not actually work well in a human. In fact, 80% of them don't. Clearly, this way of testing drugs and its inability of actually telling us what's gonna happen in humans costs billions of dollars of wasted time and effort. Costs which ultimately get passed down to daily consumers of medicine, like you and me. To make matters even worse, the most commonly missed side effects in these drugs is that of our heart, our favorite organ. As an undergraduate student who did research with a cardiothoracic surgeon, a cardiologist, and a soon-to-be cardiology fellow, I cannot tell you the number of patients I've encountered who come to the hospital with heart problems that are actually caused by medications they're taking for everyday issues such as heartache or joint pain. Failure of pre-human clinical safety assays, the ones that are commonly conducted on mice, to identify which drugs are actually going to be toxic to the heart result in millions of needless patient deaths every single year. Cardiotoxicity is actually the leading cause of drug attrition during clinical development and is the most common cause of drug withdrawal from the market after they've been released. 42% of all drug recalls between 1994 and 2006 were actually caused by cardiac toxicity that was not detected in the 12-year drug development cycle that it takes to actually get one of these drugs approved. In the past 15 years alone, there have been 20 drugs that have been pulled, to the mar pulled from the market because of these adverse effects. So not only does it cost billions of dollars to get a drug to market, but making the drugs insanely expensive, but there's a chance that they'll actually get removed from the market anyways because they were toxic to the heart and we weren't able to see that sooner. This situation seems to be getting bleaker and bleaker by the second. We leverage the promise of regenerative medicine to tackle this monstrous problem. These huge issues of drug development costs and toxicity that's impossible to see could just be solved if we were able to test these compounds on humans way earlier than is currently allowed. So my colleagues and I have created exactly this. We're calling it a clinical trial in a dish. One that makes it possible to access the effect of any drug on a patient's organ in a risk-free environment five to six years earlier in the drug development process than currently possible. And we're starting with the heart. The technology we developed allows us to take your skin, convert them into stem cells, and turn those stem cells into beating heart cells on a dish, as you can see in the video. The coolest thing about this technology is that the beating heart cells derived from your own skin cells feel, look, and beat very differently than mine would. Patients whose hearts beat irregularly in real life, their cells will also beat irregularly on a dish. With that said, we can literally create a clinical trial where we have patients from different ethnic, genetic, and even predispositions to heart disease conditions and can test what a specific drug's effect will be on each one of those individual patients. If we find that the drug is toxic, maybe it's only toxic to a subset of that population, the drug company will stop investing in ineffective compounds and be able to channel their resources to ones that are actually promising. We've tested every single drug that has been pulled from market due to cardiac toxicity and have shown with 100% accuracy that we could have spotted it on day one of its inception. The ability to grow functional heart cells in a dish has so many applications as well. Instead of being put on an organ transplant list after having a heart attack, we'll be able to inject these cells grown from your own skin cells to repair your heart's functionality. There's still a lot of time before we'll be able to do something like that, 
So for now, being able to shave off six years off the drug development process, reducing the cost of developing these drugs to nearly half of what it currently costs, will not only give people access to medicines sooner, but will finally make it affordable for people all around the world to have access to medicine. Thank you. Thank you.